We are here with Maureen Messier, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Elk Grove Unified School District. So thanks for joining us. Thank you. Well, tell us what school, where, you, where you teach and what subjects you teach. I'm at Sheldon High School currently, and I teach uh, theater arts classes. Uh, I have the beginning acting and the advanced level acting classes, and an occasional children's theater class. Well, tell us a little bit about that and, and what the programs entail and what you're doing as you work with your students. We've been really fortunate at Sheldon since it opened. Uh, it became kind of a Disneyland. It's hmm. uh, an amazing place to work with lots of high expectations, lots of glamour that you see at Disneyland, but you know, behind the scenes there's a lot of hard work. We have two theaters there, so that allows us to do a number of different kinds of performances. Um, we've won a couple of national awards in the time there and sent students over to the Fringe Festival in Edinburgh, Scotland to perform. So it's been a very active program. We do the main stage work, which is you know the after school work and the mm -hmm. nighttime things, but we do a lot of performing for the daytime for our students, for the middle school students, which are close to us, and then we do uh, the children's show for the Elk Grove Unified Elementary students. We do about 6,000 students that come through and watch that in the springtime. So it's a constant performance schedule. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what is it like working uh, in the arts with uh, students? Is it, is it easier to motivate students who are in the arts, or, or some, t some days are better than others? <laughs> I would like to think it was easier to motivate them. Um, not all the students are in the class because they chose it. And then there's kids out there that chose it and don't get in the class, so there's always that. And one assumes that you know, they all want to be there, but sometimes mom thought it was the best choice. Um, it, it's a real high energy situation where my energy needs to be really high to get them involved and engage them. Um, there's always that student that is the proverbial class clown, only when it comes to memorizing lines, <laughs> it's a little different. <laughs> so there's that learning the discipline. Um, and, and honestly, in the last 10 years especially, there's been um, a real challenge in the creativity of the kids. I mean, what their experiences are now at the elementary level um, in terms of the arts are, are pretty limited. That didn't used to be the case as much. So when I say to them, you know, Mel, be an ice cream cone, not quite that simple, but mm -hmm. they look at me a little, what? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it takes a lot more to engage and have their little brain firing those creative bubbles and but it's a challenge it's a good challenge well, what are some of the other challenges you face in the classroom um, I'm not I don't have an issue with discipline in the traditional sense usually um, they know I enjoy being there and I want to get up in the morning and come to school and I try to foster that for them that they want to get up and be there I think the biggest thing is taking that really shy flower that child that just barely can speak above a whisper when they're speaking in front of people and make them comfortable enough to perform in front of their peers. Because at all levels of all of our acting classes, including the beginning level, they do perform for invited audiences by the end of the course. So when they hear that on the first day, they're, about, they're ready to bolt out the door. But that journey, um, mm -hmm. learning that self-confidence. And like I tell them, they may be winning an Oscar someday and thanking me, that would be great. <laughs> but also, um, I know they'll be better when they do their senior project per, um, per presentation or when they do their speech proficiency in their English class. They'll get something from that class and certainly be a more well-rounded human being. Hopefully. Of course, because not every student who takes an acting class is right. there to be an actor. Oh. Uh, but like you say, it, it, it's the life skills mm -hmm. that they learn. Mm -hmm. And everything that we do, I try to relate that to a broad spectrum, not just, oh, you're going to be an actor, but rather, you know, if you're the CEO of a company or you're a doctor or you're the manager, just being able to talk to your people and even some of the team building things that we do will serve you really well. Now, how long have you been teaching? <laughs> 32 years. I started when I was 10. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been a different kind of credential at the time, <sighs> I guess. Mm -hmm. So what have you seen in, in all that time of teaching? Mm -hmm. what, what kind of changes have you seen either in the teaching profession itself or with the students that you deal with? I think within the profession, and probably on, kind of on a sad note, is when I became a teacher, I just don't remember the young teachers not sticking with it. It was it was something that you chose and this was a career path and this is what you were going to do. And now, um, within five years, 50% of new teachers leave the profession. So that speaks to something uh, mm -hmm. that's going on out there. Um, 
I certainly think that the demands on the teacher are much more intense. Just the introduction of email. When I first started <laughs> teaching, there wasn't a phone in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So you had to go up to the office to make that phone call. So those kinds of interruptions and those kinds of demands on time, they're, they're really, it's really pressed the day in a different way. In terms of the kids, kids are kids. Um, but I think the, the more real answer is they come from a different world too. Um, they're exposed to things that I wasn't exposed to till I was maybe this age even. Uh, mm. They see things on TV and their ability to differentiate between something real and emote, some kind of emotion over something that's a movie kind of blurs, um, which is sad to me. And certainly that's something we talk about in theater. Uh, I remember when 9-11 happened and someone laughing when someone was jumping off the building. And we st talked, we were, I was crying, but we talked, and talked about how to this student it was more of, couldn't possibly be real, couldn't really figure that out, that that wasn't just a movie and you turn it off and it goes away. So I think with media and you know, the internet and they can text message in their pocket better than I can text message looking at it, all of those things has really changed who they are. And I don't know that educationally we've totally been keeping abreast of that. Mm -hmm. We don't have the finances, we don't have the wherewithal to be that technological. We'd like to, but I think those are the big things. But you found that I guess there is a constant as far as students getting involved in theater and, and what they gain out of it. Yes, I, they still blossom, they still bloom, they still, uh, I, there's nothing better than watching a kid walk off the stage that was successful and they didn't think they were going to be and they they're flying and then they want to sign up for theater again you know mm -hmm. um, it, the adrenaline rush is really great for them and just the self-confidence or to have one of their teachers say hey I saw you doing whatever it was and that was really great and they're just so amazed that a the teacher saw it mm -hmm. and B that they liked it and they're getting a compliment so yeah well what inspired you to become a teacher or was there a particular teacher that inspired you? I, there are teachers that continued the inspiration, but I wanted to be a teacher since I was very young. Since I mean, I literally remember in the third and fourth grade having a stack of papers in a red pen <laughs> and pretending I was a teacher. I don't know the red pen and the papers. You don't really equate with theater now, but that idea of of learning and being in class was always there. I had an aunt that was a teacher, and um, she was always somewhat of an inspiration to me. Uh, she worked with me a lot when I was younger and uh, I was babysat by her and so homework was always first. Um, and I always liked just the way she dealt with me in school. And then I had some amazing teachers, way back to Sister Mary Carmel in the sixth grade, <laughs> who I will never forget, and many of her stories that she told, to a number of my high school teachers. Um, that. Even today, I was thinking about my U.S. History Honors teacher, Arnie Zimbelman, and some of the things he did in our class. And the names come really easy to me. Um, they were special people, and they lit up the room. And for me, they also lit up my career. Mm. Yeah. What was it like when you found out you were named one of the teachers <laughs> of the year? I cried. <laughs> mm. um, the door of my classroom opened. And here's the superintendent uh, coming in with balloons, along with this long line of other people and dignitaries. My class, not having any idea what this was about, immediately started singing Happy Birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it was really quite fun. The superintendent didn't really know what to do. He sort of let them finish, and he said, well, this might be even better than a birthday. And it was indeed. It was, it's a very special honor. Mm -hmm. Well, finally, let me ask, what would you say to someone who is considering being a teacher? Hmm. Do you really want to? Do you know what it takes? Are you prepared to give that up? And then you'll get back a lot. But make sure you're clear and that you're not doing it for vacations because they're really not that many. And you're not doing it for pay because it's not that glamorous. But it is extremely rewarding. Yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations to you. We've Thank been speaking you. with Maureen Messier, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Elk Grove Unified School District. Thanks for being with us. Thank you very much.